A little context, it's a store altercation, so we're gonna break it down what's going on in the store and our thoughts on it. I ain't really see this full video, but we're about to hop right into it. In three, two, one, let's go. Yeah. I'm gonna post this on YouTube, by the way. Yeah, so, so you could just, whatever you, whatever thoughts come to mind. <laughs> <Really>? <laughs> Hey man, people. I don't know what happened, so let me see. So we're gonna do we're gonna talk about what happened and we're gonna get some tips on what the store people could have did better, basically, and when they, when they open businesses in Detroit, what's the thing they can do to avoid stuff like this? Hey, bro, I swear, I'm gonna beat your ass. Bro, I'm gonna catch you on that bass and illegal shit, I'm knocking your ass out. Let me catch you back on a store and shit, I'm knocking your ass out. I'm gonna beat your ass. I'm gonna, hold that door, I'm beating his ass. I'm beating his ass, nah. I'm beating your ass, nah, boy. So look, my first, my first thought is like, when I first seen him mad yelling at the guy, you don't always see that. What you think could have happened? What's some scenarios that you think could have happened that made him um, start going off on him like that? You asking me? Yeah. Probably nine out of ten, it'd be the disrespect. Half of the time, half of the time, they be in there talking crazy to people. Like behind the counter, right? Yeah. But we don't know. It's like it jumped right in. We don't even. You can't really see what started it all. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, I don't know. But it's good. It's good. And that's a good point you brought up, though. Because, like, we don't know what started it, but the more we watch. But I wanted to just make a prediction, like, what we think happened. Because the more we watch, we know. But that's a good point. Because I tell people all the time when they like, oh, don't go to Detroit and open up a store. This going to happen. They need the bulletproof glass or they going to get robbed or shot and all this. And I'm like, well, you got to understand, like, People, some people say it out of just ignorance, and some people really be like, dang, do y'all really need bulletproof glass in all y'all stores? And I like to say it's the reason that people have it is because when they come here, they stand behind the glass, and people in the community feel like, I'm scraping a, together a couple of dollars just to go to the store and get something, and then y'all behind the counter making money off of us, got this glass because y'all, you know, not involved in the community. So they coming up there stressed out, and then they don't feel like, these people even care about what's going on for real, but they they're making money. So that's why you see them going off like that. That's the first thought in my head. Like, that's number one. And you said sometimes it's disrespect. Like, yeah, because they feel like they gotta have this image. You know, like you can't just come in here and do anything in the store. And it don't be like that because if you get communication with the people at the store, you don't have a lot of altercations with people because. Like our corner store, everybody in there cool, whatever. They do got a bulletproof glass up there, but the people back there is real cool. But then you get people in there sometimes just want to act a fool. Mm -hmm. And that's not all the case. And what they do is look at us as in every black person is a problem. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's have to come off so aggressive towards them. Yeah. So me, I think he probably said something that were, or was more aggressive. To him for him to act like that. I yeah, don't know. and he started going off on him like, bro, you don't know where you at. Like, you just think you can just yeah, come here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that, you know, he already feeling like, okay, it's his glass right here. It ain't no accountability for if he say something slick right. to the guy. Right, and that. they be back there talking crazy. Yeah, so. Knowing he, they behind the glass. Yeah, he probably going in there like, all right, you in our neighborhood doing this. And I think at the same time, yeah, it's people that go in there and they 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 can steal, they wild, they will try to rob, right? You get them scenarios, but some people think it's all the time, every day, 24-7. Mm -hmm. And it's not. But what I think is, if you get a community where what I've seen is, let's say somebody come to America, open up a liquor store in the hood, and they get cool with the community, if somebody in there popping off like that, people, the locals would be in there like, hey, bro, chill, bro, why are you mm -hmm. talking to him? Like, you know, the locals would step up and be like, hey, bro, chill, like, don't yeah. be talking to him like that, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, but that's what happened when you establish that that community, you know, and people go in there, they like, hey, bro, like, chill, you know, 
They'll uh, step up for you and, and, and calm and sit and step in with the situation and probably know the guy that's talking crazy. Right. Exactly. That's it. I'm being your ass now. I'm being your ass now. Nigga, I'm going to knock your ass out with these legal hands, boy. He bitch lethal, nigga. Hey, Mr. Lethal, nigga. I'm going to knock you the fuck out. Hey, don't know something. I'm not going to help you, bro. Bro, I'm not going to get this nigga. I want to fuck this bitch up so bad. I'm gonna come shoot this bitch up though. I'm gonna come in with my mask and shoot it up. See, look, one thing I say with homeboy, he mad, I get it, but he already incriminated himself. Mm-hmm. He's saying he gonna come in here and do X, Y, Z. He already incriminated himself because he mad, right? So it's like, that's one thing. Never do that. If you mad, whatever, right? But don't do that because you incriminating yourself already. You on camera, clear as day, making threats like mm-hmm. that. Like that, that alone can get you locked up right there. So. And I ain't saying do it, but if that's something you about to do, why even talk about it? And if you mad like that, man, try to control them emotions because look, he on camera saying that. That's already a case right there. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna kill you. You scary. See, you oh scared yeah. Just green light. What the hell happened? I don't know, dog. A pump on dog, though. No. Man. <laughs> he a good pump. That's what you want to he said, I came to the store at the wrong time. See, sometimes people don't want nothing to do with that. Look, he's like, I came here at the wrong time. Uh... Yeah, it's crazy because all like you said, they only show him getting mad. So people gonna watch. Look, it's all it's how many people watch this video? Almost a million people watch this video. Everybody, I bet the comments is like clown, monster, animal, right? Like, let me see. Problem sees uh, identity crisis. Name dog a reference to as a dog. Yeah, because they basically defending the guy behind the cop. But you don't know, right? I ain't defending nobody, but we don't know what happened. So everybody making homeboy look, look crazy. Look like he the one tripping, but yeah. That, you know, but that's why I like I love doing these breakdowns to let people know like what's going on. And then we got uh, this bitch. Two many. No, let me get one many, a lighter. You got um, the strawberry lemonade? Yeah. And a dab. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> he's somebody they gave me. He sound like he, he too old to be on Snapchat. Yeah, I want. Um... Give me a squeeze too. Give me a squeeze. 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 Give me a no, he was right here, but uh-huh. bro, you should have popped that bitch, though. You can't up strap to the D and not pop, bro. No, no, no that makes Because he would have popped the shit out to him if he had a stick, bro. Oh, so, so the gas station man pulled the gun out back there. Yeah, so, but I think he pulled, yeah, they saying he pulled the gun out, but I think he probably pulled it out because he was yelling like that. Yeah. But, see, look, that's a. Okay, that's another thing, though. Correct me if I'm wrong. So, the guy going to the store, he yelling at the clerk. All we see is that we don't know what the clerk did to the guy. The clerk behind the bulletproof glass pull a gun out. From my understanding of the law, and these gas station owners do, they do get caught up sometime, right? Or these liquor store owners, too. Because it was one situation where the guy came out and, like, uh, did start shooting people in the store. It just mm-hmm. happened in Detroit, oh, right? Oh, yeah. So it's stuff like that where it exposed like what I be saying, right? Where it's like, okay, y'all saying it's just the people in the community fault, but it do come out that a lot of these people do have these wrong intentions. I'm about mm-hmm. to come here and make money. I don't care about none of these people here. And that come out like that where he came out and just got the shooting, right? He went to jail for that, obviously, but sometimes you got to look at the deeper issue. So he pulled out the gun. Legally, he was making threats. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't... From what I know, you can't just pull out, because I took the CPL training, I got my license. You can't just pull a gun out if somebody's saying, if they mad and they're standing on the other side of a glass. From mm-hmm. my understanding, the only way you could pull a gun out is if somebody pull a gun out on you, right? So, I can't pull my gun out unless somebody start reaching for their knife, or it's a group of people, or they start reaching for their weapon. That's the only way you can legally pull a gun, all right? But he in a store behind the counter, so I don't know... Him coming in aggressive like that, if that means something different. Because I remember when we was in the store, and we was kids, and we went, uh, I went in there with some guys, and they want to hold the door open, and everybody start grabbing chips off the counter. As soon as we went in, I'm like, bro, I got I got a couple dollars on me. I don't need to steal no chips. I'll buy some. Mm-hmm. The guys I was with grab a whole arm full of chips, 
Can you hit that real quick? The uh, low battery. Mm-hmm. Where that one y'all? So the guy, the guy would grab a whole row of chips, and the clerk behind the counter whip out a gun so big he was like, Whew. "I'm like, oh, I duck, cause I'm like, I ain't, know, you know, I ain't about to get shot over no, no legs, chips, yeah. not over no legs." <laughs> I'm like, I got two dollars in my pocket. Look, y'all can run, do all that. I, I had to run with him cause I was with him. They would have tried to lock me in there, so I had to run with him. But in that situation, okay, we go in there. One of the guys, cause you know they locked the door. One of the guys I'm with hold the door open. The other group of guy go in there, take the chips, and then dog pull out the gun. You, from my understanding, that's illegal. You can't just pull a gun on somebody because they taking some chips. And right? y'all kids. That's what I'm saying. For sure. So, it, and it's like, but I like to also think how it, how can you stop people from stealing? You probably can't. Security. Get a security guard. That, I just thought about that. Get a security guard, mm-hmm. and then people can't just come in there and steal, right? So or hire somebody from the com- well. It might be somebody from the community because it'd be the young guys that be causing a lot of trouble, though, for real. So hire somebody from the community, pay them, you know, $100 a day to do security. I don't know, 100 whatever. I don't hire much, you know, but somebody to do that, though. And just look out for the young guys and there's somebody that's trusted. But that look like that's the end of that video. Because um, mm, they was just talking. Basically. Yeah, but no, I mean, that's a good point, though. Like, I think at the end of the day, if people going to come to a neighborhood and set up shop, you got to, like, even for me. When I go into a neighborhood and I'm planning on opening up some stuff soon, right, in a neighborhood, I'm not about to go in there, isolate myself from the people, mm-hmm. start making money, pull up, leave, right? I get if you're just trying to make a dollar and make some money, then you do that. But if you're really trying to go in and build a business that's going to last long, you ain't going to have to worry about no liabilities. Um, it don't mean people ain't going to come at you, but it's, it's a right and a wrong way to do stuff, you know what I mean? And people got the misconception that I'm going to go into a neighborhood, just dumb, no guard, and just let people do what they want. Mm-hmm. No, I ain't doing that, you know? Yeah. So. And then in most stores, you you got to build that relationship with the community. You can't just come in there all aggressive. And then they just put anybody in these gas stations a couple of times. I done been in there or the store and they be back there talking crazy. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And you can't do that. Because you wouldn't think that somebody will be waiting for you to do something or anything. You can't talk crazy to people. And then, y'all, they want to come in the community and get all these businesses and stuff. And just not respectable. Mm-hmm. No, for real. Because people know they smart. If you really look out for some people. Like, we was watching a video earlier. We going to react to that one, too. Where a guy ended up getting robbed or whatever. And he went into the store and was like, hey, man, can I get a cigarette, man? I just need a cigarette, man. I just got robbed or whatever. So the guy behind the counter slid him a cigarette. And I'm like, him doing that, he going to remember that. Like, dang, the time I got robbed, he looked out for me. Nah, the problem is if he go in there every day asking for cigarettes, the mm-hmm. guy behind the counter do need to be a serve. At that point, like, hey, bro, once you pay me the, you know, the dollar or whatever, the uh, 50 cent for this square, this cigarette, then I'll give you another one, right? Mm-hmm. And that's when he'd be like, all right, bro, I got you. Because people will test. You know, they will test to see if he can just keep getting them for free like that. If he's like, no, nah, just pay me for the next one and I got you. That's how you build that relationship. Like Dutch told me, he already got it to where he'd go to the store. And if he uh, if he's short on some money or whatever, then he'd just pay him. It's like, once he pay him, then he know he good, right? Mm-hmm. He borrow, oh, yeah, uh, let me get this extra bag of chips. I'm going to bring the money up here next time. Mm-hmm. And then the uh, clerk give it to him. He bring the money back, so he good. It's like having an open account. It's uh, mm-hmm. I used to have one of them at the store. I can't remember the tab. It's like having a tab, and a lot of people do that. You know, they mm-hmm. have tabs in the community, but they do that when they see somebody over and over, and that's when they respect that person, right? And then the community will hold you down for the most part. Somebody going to store right. tripping like that, and then especially if you a respectable person, but that's just like if I go in the store and you know I'm a I'm a respectable person. Then they get the trip into talking to me crazy any kind of way. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because that does happen. They'll try to lash out or do something to people that ain't got nothing to do with what you had going on. The prior person that was just in here tripping. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm yeah. saying? People do that. They, you have been a got into it or something done happened prior. Now you taking it out on everybody. Then yeah, because it's I, gonna be a problem. Because remember the store in Taylor that I used to go to. Remember on the corner, Max Liquor Store. Mm-hmm. They used to talk to me crazy. And back then, I was about everything. Like I'm out doing stuff, and I'm trying to go. When I go home, I'm home. I ain't doing nothing crazy. I'm chilling, right? My street life versus when I'm at home in my neighborhood in my community. I'm chilling. 
So I would go in that store and he'd be, what you, did you take something? Did you, you stealing something? Hurry up and get out of my store. And I'm like, dang, bro, like I'm just trying to, and I never stole nothing out of that store. Now mm-hmm. I can't say I did in other stores, but in this store, I'm like, this is my home. This is where I live at. This is where my mama live at. This is my community. I'm not about to come in here and take something from this store where I live and this is where I lay my head. Nah, mm-hmm. if I was like, dang, I want this or I'm about to go try to take this and go resell from Maya or Walmart, I'll go take something out of there and try to resell. But back here, I never did that. But it was the way, like, I always walked in there, hey, how y'all doing? But he was just heated. But then I see him with the older guys. When I came in there with the older guys, it was all respect. But he seen some of the people that was around the same neighborhood we was in. And he seen them stealing. So he lumped me in with them. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I ain't got nothing to do with them guys. You know what I mean? I ain't even go in the store with these guys. Right. I wish I knew that so I could have went in there and cut up. Yeah, but he used to be, they used to be talking crazy to me. And the crazy thing is, like, I was about all that. I was about anything that would have, and, and it could have been anything in me that would have just made me pop off on him. But I'm like, I ain't even trying to, I'm just trying to lay low key around her because I know I'm going to get in trouble because I'm right, mm-hmm. I live right here. But it was just crazy because he talking to me while not knowing that, like, bro, if I really wanted to do something to you, I would, you know, right. but I'm like, I'm trying to stay out of trouble. Like, this is my, this is my community, mm-hmm. you know, but if I really wanted to, I could have, but I'm like, I ain't gonna do that because I'm right here. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? This is where I got to walk every day. Right. But that's your prime example of like, he, he was taking that out on me like all the time. Right. I'm just like, because this one per this person did that. And if like, you basically pair me up with them and I... I'm not even nothing like them in here. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? I never did this in your store, but just because I'm in the same age range, same all this, mm-hmm. you just put me in that category, and I don't. I'm not in that category right now. Coming in here, I'm trying to respect y'all, speak to y'all, all that, but you coming towards me aggressive, and you got to mm-hmm. think how many other people he did like that. Because I don't went in the store. They respect me when I go in there. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? They ain't never came off to me like that. Yeah. And then once so I- y'all um, judging before you even know me, get for me to talk to you, say anything. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then over time, once they see me coming there with people, they was like, okay, whatever. But it shouldn't even took all that. Cause- yeah. Because yeah. I didn't come off on your first impression as your best impression. And I didn't give you that. So why would you even come towards me like that? Because yeah. you already profiled me in the beginning. And that's one thing, and, and pre- like I think prejudice can be good at, at, at one way of like, for me, if I see consistent patterns and look at behaviors, it's like psychology, but it should never come off as like a underestimate or judge of nobody. I, mm-hmm. That's one thing I never do. I never underestimate and never judge because I give a prime example. Like you can look at, okay, this is how people dress in this neighborhood, but I'll tell you straight up. You can assume, let's say if somebody dressed down, you can assume, okay, this person either don't, when they out and about, they don't want to buy flashy stuff, so they might be either saving money or spending it somewhere else, or they might not have the money. It could be either one of those. But to come in and be like, oh, this person poor, because they, mm-hmm. they they not really dressed up like that, or whatever, but it's like, no, nah, they might not prioritize that. Look at the age range, right? That's a good, better example. Now, a lot of young black guys in my age range, a lot of them, even if they are poor, we tend to dress up because if we walk out the house and we poor, people going to treat us like we poor. Mm-hmm. We poor and we walk out the house and we look good, people going to treat us, they going to treat us with respect. Mm-hmm. You know, um, and that's the hard thing about like what I see our community struggling with. You got some $200 J's on, but you poor, but you know them, them J's going to make you have a better day when you wake mm-hmm. up and go to work and when you go to school versus... And that's, that's the hard, yeah, that, yeah. and I'm going to talk more about that in another video because I, I dealt with a lot of that, but you look at the age range. I notice in the neighborhood I'm investing in, it's always a lot of older black women and they, let me I say more about like 50 plus 60 and they always dress like you can see them walking up the street and not even notice them. Be some of the biggest developers. One of them mm-hmm. I know right now. She on my channel. She said she did three ten million dollar. She was a part of three ten million dollar renovations, and she worked with the Pentagon out mm-hmm. in Washington. Worked for the government, and she building. Uh, she just built some condos over where I'm at. And when you look at her, you would think like you would see her at the grocery store and think she like you wouldn't even notice her. It's like she mm-hmm. looked like every other lady mm-hmm. in the neighborhood, right? The she looked like the grandma in the neighborhood, and it's crazy because. I started seeing a pattern. I seen another lady that built these container uh, businesses over there. And I'm like, who built this? Who built this? 
The lady walk up. She looked just like the other lady, right? You wouldn't even notice her, right? Mm -hmm. But they know in these communities and neighborhoods, the work that we doing, if you pull up flashy, you pull up a certain way, then they're going to, with their demographic, people going to look at them, right? Like, what? But me being a rapper, me being my age, I, I still move the way I do over there because it's inspiring to the people that I'm trying to reach, right? So when young guys walk up on me, they're like, oh, okay, bet. All right, like, he, you know, he got the glasses on, whatever, right? So it's like a relatable thing. Mm -hmm. So that's why, like, I always say, yeah, sometimes seeing patterns and stuff like that can be helpful. But when it's negative like that, then that's where it hurts you. Because yeah. people underestimate me all day, every day. But it's funny when they do that, you know? Mm -hmm. I walk in somewhere, they be like, oh, yeah, buddy, what you doing here? Or something like that. And then I'm like, well, I'm trying to get some insurance for my house. Insurance for the house? Ooh, nah, nah, nah. And then I get to talking like, oh, yeah, well, I got this development project I've been working on for six months. You know, I got worldwide media what i'm trying to do is share this property i got people working on it you know probably about 100 volunteers i want to make sure that i'm not a, a liable if somebody get hurt so let me get sure blah 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 and then they're like wait what so it's it's, it's funny you know because people profile you before you even open your mouth <laughs> as soon as you walk up they got a, a assumption of how you is and how you you know what i'm saying how you act off the bell then when you get to talking to them and all that, they like, it mess them up. Yeah. Because people tell me all the time, like, you don't even sound like you from Detroit or sound, whatever, right? And I, I be, I get, I'm a little less offended by it, but it's like, okay, you look at me, people look at me and they're like, okay, whatever, right? People be nervous, like, oh man, he, whatever. But then when I start talking, they're like, oh, we good. And I'm like, no, you're not good. Like, if I decide you're not good. <laughs> It's just that I done been on countless radio interviews. I read a lot. I travel a lot. I speak mm -hmm. a lot. So that's why. But that don't make that don't change nothing when it come down to, you know what I mean? The, the people who I done had to pull guns on and knock out, they know. Like, right. it's just funny. But I want to, my big thing is that I think it's dope when I'm in a corporate setting and hood guys walk in. Like, we seem buffed up. As soon as I see somebody <laughs> walk in with the buffs on, I'm like, hey, what's good? Because it's like, we need more of that. Like, we should be able to... I love when people from the hood come into, like, events and then know they stuff, know they business and they game, right? It's a few guys I work with that's the same way. Like, you know your business. You're going to talk well about it, you know? Mm -hmm. so, but, man. Um, all right, I'm about to wrap this up, y'all, because I'm going to try to uh, get this edited and put it on YouTube. We, got a, we was reacting to a YouTube video about a guy having an altercation with a clerk behind the counter. Um, let me end this. Can you hit here? I got it. I got it. I got it. I'm about to read these.